Controversy in the World Dart semi-finals. A.D. Lewis moaning about a draft, moaning about a breeze. James Wade thinks that's rubbish. He's taken the first two sets. He's not interested in having a debate about it. He's interested in reaching the final. And so, to confirm, the first finalist in the World Championship final tomorrow night is Andrew Hamilton, who's put out the wizard 6-5. And at the moment, you'd say odds on that he'll be playing James Wade as the machine has taken the first two sets with the world champion threatening to unravel in front of our very eyes. There's still a lot of chit-chat going on on stage about the draft or perceived draft and they are heading off stage. The players are departing the scene, they're departing the stage, Lewis and Wade have gone off and uh, well, one can only assume is that because they believe conditions are not fit for play. We saw a little bit of a breeze blowing on a piece of paper on our camera just a couple of minutes ago, but it didn't look that bad. What's your take on it, Wayne? Never seen the like of it? Never seen the like at all. But during the break, Adrian Lewis was on the stage and he was he was whinging again about the uh, the breeze or the, the wind, the draft, whatever you want to call it, on the stage. And that was during the break and he was on there alone. And James Wade obviously come on and confirmed it. Well, this is what was happening during the commercial break. That's the breeze that Lewis is talking about. You can see the paper perceptibly moving. But I'll ask you, Wayne, you've been up, you've played in five semi-finals. Would that be enough to bother you, a minor movement of paper like that? Does that really, tell us from a pro's point of view, does that really affect the dark? Well, having played in, in many a, an arena, you're gonna, going to get some draft or a breeze somewhere. But what normally affects the dark mostly is a, is a downward breeze. A downward breeze can really affect you, but it seems to me that a crosswood breeze is not as bad. But what I will say is, I think that I, James Wade played Adrian Lewis like, like a banjo. And I can't see why Adrian uh, James Wade would have wanted to walk off that stage unless it was that bad. Yeah, it is a cavernous building, this uh, Alexandra Palace. This hall that we're in is, uh, is vast in itself, but there are other halls, like the Great Hall adjacent. There are cavernous passages leading down to the players' room and bar areas, so there could be a possibility of, of a breeze that is blowing about. But this is what happened when they came back on from the break there's a way to say, well, look, I, you know, it's blowing all over the place. This is impossible. That's it. That's it. I can't carry on here. Well, Lewis isn't going to disagree. Bruce Bentley's on now. Let's hear what he's got to say. We'll be back as soon as possible. Thank you. Well, Bruce Bentley just explaining that the wind or the breeze is too much. Players say they can't play. And uh, let's go back up to the studio and find out what Dave Clark and guests have got to say about it. Well, Rod, I've been down there, and there is definitely a breeze. You can feel it, but there's no doors open. And uh, as far as they're concerned, it could be the air conditioning in another hall that's, that's uh, dragging some sort of convection current going through the venue, and that could be the problem. Yeah, it does happen, Dave. And you only have to have the slightest bit of breeze. Um, these darts they're throwing, you know, anywhere from 18 to 22, 24 grams, are very light darts and the slightest breeze will put them off and, and it can because in these old buildings the air will funnel from areas and funnel along alleyways and sweep up the stage. We've had it before, it's a shame but, but it is a fact. It's a, it's a massive arena and there's a lot of heat in here yeah. and at the moment the engineers are behind the stage trying to turn every single unit off and they're going around checking every single doorway every single unit but there's no air conditioning on here so it's not that and it's not the doors open either no well they've got to find out what it is because it's unfair on the players um, to you know try and throw darts because you what you try and do is throw the dart harder to, ke to keep it online and uh, when, of course once you start losing your natural throw then you're not going to perform it to, to your ability so uh, it, it's a shame it happens now and again we've had it before in odd places and uh, you know, like you say, they're, they're, everyone's running about trying to switch everything off. Is, is Wade using this to his advantage, do you think? He's, he's got the crowd on his side, and Adrian Lewis certainly was upset. You could hear him shouting, yeah. very cross, lost his cool completely. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a tough one. I don't think James is using it to his ability, uh, because James does not do that. But, but 
We've, all, we've known in other uh, tournaments and in this tournament that if the crowd get on your back a little bit and you react to that, then they will give you even more. I mean, James just messing around there as if the breeze is that, that strong, it's going to knock him over. I mean, he's just throwing a, three dart, a few darts to see if the breeze is still there. But should Adrian be up there as well? I mean, the fact that he's not there, the fact that Wade's having a laugh and a, a joke about it, again, could work against Adrian. He's showing a little bit of naivety, dare I say? Yeah, there's no question. I think uh, Keegan's manager should be telling him to get on stage and just, you know, what, what he's not doing is not keeping his arm moving, Dave. You know, you've been practicing three or four hours, you know, down the players' room, all of a sudden you've stopped. And it's like anything, you, you know, you get a little bit seized up, so it might be a little bit stiff. I mean, James is pointing there. I don't know whether he thinks it's coming above the... Um... Well, here comes Aidy now. Well, this is just what he didn't want. No, he didn't. He just made his way up the stairs, you know. What he should do is wave to the crowd, smile at them, you know, give them a little bow, try and get them back on his side. I mean, this is the semi-final World Championship. It's unfortunate that that happens, uh, but like I say, in these old buildings, you know, the breeze funnels from anywhere. Well, he's just saying to Gary Wood, one of our Marcus and Chalkers, you know, is it coming from above? The, they've got a curtain, there's a, there's a row of doors, you know, to their left. Um, where spectators come in and out, the VIPs. Well, there we have it. It looks like some air conditioning. There's an open. air conditioning d d that looks open. Now, whether that's been open for a, a while, whether it's something that's just happened, that's what they're complaining about. Whether whether or not someone could get a ladder to that, and whether those blue bits on there pull down and shut it off. They look like they're just vents that uh, that guide. I don't think they. No, they're not uh, shutters that pull down. They're just vents that. that make the air come downwards instead of going up to the roof. It, it, to stop the air conditioning, they've got to turn the air conditioning off. But it's strange how, I mean, some, some hotels and some venues, when it, the heat gets to a certain amount, the air conditioning comes automatically on. And, and our guys, our backstage staff, Mark League and their guys, uh, are so precise in doing everything to make sure that these, um, the autopilot on an air condition doesn't come on. Strange, strange situation. Strange situation. You've got to feel, we mentioned it earlier, but that just the sheer heat out there and so many bodies packed into a huge room. We've had it at the Premier League where literally the, the sheer heat of the crowd causes the air to move. Yeah. And, and could that be it? I mean, they've been dancing and singing. We've had a massively long match to start the evening with Andy Hamilton and Simon Whitlock. And, you know, when you make your way to the studio, you can, you can feel the heat. You can feel the heat, Dave, but I don't think that has been anything to do with it. I mean, you know, hot air does rise. Uh, I, I really don't think that's got anything to do with it. If they're feeling the breeze, it would have to be, you know, something really significantly that you can feel, and the darts have to fly through the air completely different before they'll stop. They wouldn't just come off, no gamesmanship or nothing in this. It, it is that there's a breeze coming in, and uh, they've, they've got to try and stop it. I mean... I've got to say that James Ray seems to be handling it the better, doesn't he? Yeah, <coughs> excuse me, I think that's because of the crowd. I mean, you know, the, it, the crowd are not on his back, where they're on Aidy's back. And chatting away. Yeah, it's a bit sad that it, it happens, but you know, we have had this before. And, and go back to the heat, Dave. Now, the heat. That's, what, that's, that's tournament director yeah. Tommy Cox, he's trying to urge the players to get on with it. We're hearing three darts each, and then they've got to resume play. Now... Well, we'll find out if the breeze is still there, because if they throw and can feel it, then uh, they may walk off again. If, if both players walk off, then you know there's something wrong. If one walked off, and the other one said, look, it, it, it's, it's all right, then they'd have to carry on. Pressure, the crowd are shouting, we don't want darts, we want darts, so let's hand back to our commentary in 3D and in HD as well. Thanks Dave, yeah, never seen anything like it, but Tommy Cox is down there saying, look, you're going to have to get on with it. There's a packed crowd here that have paid a lot of money to watch this. There are many, many, many people watching at home on television who want to watch darts. And, you know, you could say it's a little bit like cricketers having to play in a little bit of drizzle. Isn't it? I mean, they're just going to have to, to get on with it, aren't they? Well, in the commentary box here, 
They're just thinking, let's get on, let's enjoy this. But there's one thing I want to say, Rob, we've got the aid of a, of a camera on the board that we can see when the guys are practicing during the break. And, uh, well, I've played at a decent level. And they were playing at a decent level well, during playing. the break, so I can't see no reason why it should affect them that much during the game. Well, when you've been in five World Semi-Finals, this is a World Semi-Final. I mean, well, Lewis, I, I mean, if I was Wade, I'd just carry on. I would carry on because I think Lewis is gone, and Wade can put him out of this tournament double quick if Wade just thinks, I'm going to get on with it. I, I think Wade can get Lewis out of here in a hurry. If one player refuses to carry on, he, fo he forfeits the game. Now we're looking the other side. There's a draft coming from the other side now. Uh, this is slightly farcical. And AD is now arguing with Bruce Spenley. There's Tommy Cox. Let's see what Tommy's got to say or hear what Tommy's got to say. Tommy Cox is now taking the, the air, so to speak, up on the stage. He's checking the breeze, and he's now on his way off. But Wade still not happy. Tommy Cox isn't happy. That's Matt Porter he's talking to. He's the chief executive of the Professional Darts Corporation. Well, well, there's obviously a massive problem. But if I was James Wade, I would just try and play through it. Because Adrian Lewis has gone. His mind is not on the game, and Adrian just keeps moaning about the situation. Well, Tommy Cox, we understand, is telling both players that he's happy to take them off stage while they try and isolate the problem and get that sorted. But bear in mind, it's 20 past 11 at night, and it's going to be a fact that the World Championship semi-final and the World Championship final are going to be played on the same day now. No doubt about it, this is going to be played well into what is now tomorrow, this game. This is going to run into the early hours. Wade stays on stage. Well, I'm not too sure what James Wade said to Adrian Lewis, but it was definitely amicable because they, they kind of agreed. And as we see, Adrian Lewis... Pat Wadey on the back, as if to say, I totally agree, sir. But we can see Adrian Lewis chuntering to himself. Obviously, he's not happy. Just felt that James Wade had this game. We need another Bruce Spen, they're going to say something to the crowd now. Just to say we can solve the problem we have on stage. If you can be just patient, five more minutes and we will restart the game. Thank you. We can hear what Bruce Spenley said. It happens it will take five minutes. But tell me this, way: is this naive to suggest this, that cricketers now realise they've got to play in a bit of drizzle, even in test matches, golfers will play in anything bar lightning, they know if there's heavy wind, they've just got to get on with it. Should these two players be getting on with it now, or am I being naive? Well, uh, the trouble we've got is that this is a semi-final of the World Championships. If this was a pro tour event on, on a Sunday, they would have to continue. And I do personally think that it's, the, it's a level playing field for both players. And in my opinion, I would, I would want to get on with it, especially if I was James Wade. Wade chooses to stay on stage practicing. Lewis has descended back into the bowels of the building for uh, a rest while they isolate this problem. And uh, Tommy Cox was saying a few moments ago that he believed it would be a five-minute job to sort this out while they isolate what is causing this breeze. That's what they've gone off to do, but who knows how long it's going to take, really. It's been rumbling on for, what, 15, 20 minutes now. Let's throw down to Steve Brandon, who's uh, near stage with Tommy Cox. Steve? Tommy Cox, very unfortunate. What are we doing? What are the players saying? There, there is a, a draft coming across, and obviously in a game so precise as this, it's important that we don't have a draft. We're trying, we haven't had it all week. We're trying very hard to identify it. We're taking five minutes out and then we'll be restarting um, with the best that we can make it. We actually don't know where the draft's coming from. Um, it could be said that it's the same for both players, but I'm sure at the end only one would see it that way. Yeah, that, that's not ideal. This is a World Championship semi-final. We, we want it to be the same for both players. We want it to be 
uh, pristine for both players and they, they have a, a throw which is worthy of the, the occasion. And obviously now looking to get the match back underway as soon as we can. Within the next five minutes. Thank you, Tommy. Okay. Yes. Well, good news. Good news, the play will resume in the next five minutes. Let's hope they can isolate the problem. It's, it's so, so unfortunate, isn't it? And the, the, the crowd are sort of getting restless now, and it, it could be difficult for the players. Yeah, it could be really difficult, especially for Eddie Lewis, because, you know, uh, to the crowd, it looked like he was the one who started it, uh, which is unfortunate, because it's the same for both players. You know, you, when you've got a draft, uh, you can't carry on, really, because the darts fly through the air differently. You know, James throws uh, a dart maybe a bit heavier and a little bit straighter than Aidy, where Aidy kind of lobs his up, so the breeze will catch Aidy's and push it into the five more than what, say, James's would. I mean, it, it may have been a little bit up there with the Simon Whitlock and Andy Hamilton game, but the reason they may not have noticed it is because they throw a heavier dart and they throw it a lot harder. Mm -hmm. So obviously it would have fly, flown through the air a lot better. So it may have been there but it wouldn't have affected their darts, so they wouldn't have said anything. Well, it's strange that it suddenly appeared, mm. you know, day 14 of the tournament, and that we haven't had the problem in any other day, and no one has complained about it on any other day. No, I mean, if, if it had been there before now, Dave, it would have been complained about, because, as I said, you know, the darts are so light that the slightest breeze, I've had it myself when I was playing, you know, you get in a hotel that has air conditioning through the hall, and it, it does, it, it makes them... You know, sometimes my dart used to do this, and that was when I knew there was a breeze about. But AD is obviously saying it's coming to the left and coming in and pushing his dart into the fire. How do you regroup? I mean, what, what do you do now, particularly if you're Adrian Lewis? You're hearing this, Adrian Lewis is going to get a stick again. The unfortunate thing is, it looked like he was causing the problem because James Wade was staying on stage, yeah. laughing and joking. Adrian Lewis was shaking his head and walking off stage, and the crowd instantly thought it was Adrian Lewis complaining, whereas, of course, we know it's both players. Yeah. No question. Well, it's going to be tough for Aidy. It really is. Um, James could play massive gamesmanship here, which he hasn't done because James has walked off stage now. Um, I have to say, Eric in his day um, would have just said, no, we're playing on. Come on, it's like, it's like that bad to try and you know, get, get the upper hand on his opponent. But with James walking off as well, it makes it the same for both players. When you look at the, the match stats, and it doesn't seem there's major problems. They're both scoring pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Aidy was 2 nil up in that set, and uh, it affected him in that third leg, which he should have won. He had darts at a double, three darts at double top, so he should be one set all. Um, you have to say that if he'd have hit the double top, it wouldn't have been so bad for him. Uh, but he didn't. He's two sets to nil now, and now he needs the environment to be perfect to, to get the scoring power that he needs to get himself back in his game. It's been such a brilliant tournament. It's such a shame that this, is, this has happened at, at this, this stage. The shouting again, we want darts, we want darts. It is, Dave, because we had, you know, if I commentate on it, you know, one of the best semi-finals that we've ever seen. And the crowd were on a high, the atmosphere, the adrenaline was in the crowd, you know, which makes the players feel great up on the stage. And this stop-start really does. And what it will do for the players is they'll lose that little bit of adrenaline, that little bit of momentum to really get fired up. You know, and I, what aidy has got to do now, he's really got to focus when he gets back up there. Because the break is, is longer than an ad break, does the arm go cold? Is that, is that possible? Very easy. If they're not backstage keeping their arm warmed up, it, it's like in any other sport, a runner. You know, if you're going to run 100 metres and you run 50 and stop, you're not going to do the other 50 properly. And in any other sport, a golfer, you know, you see him come off, they may be playing a, um, an extra hole, they keep warmed up. If they're not backstage keeping the arm moving, it could be a problem. That roar means that the players are coming back. Aidy's really got to concentrate now and focus, because if he doesn't, the crowd gets on his back a little bit. I mean, if I was Aidy, it, it, it's not a good position to be in, but if I was Aidy, I'd walk out there, I'd clap at the crowd, bow to them, just try to get the crowd on my side, as if to say, look, it weren't my fault. Uh, and, and you know, give me a hand to go get all of it. Matt Porter, the, the PDC chief executive, has, has briefed the players. He's talking to Steve Brandon right now. M Matt Porter, chief executive of PDC. What have the players just said to you? What have you just said to them? We've explained to both players that all the airflow mechanisms within the West Hall and the Great Hall here at Alexandra Palace are closed off. Every door is closed. Any air movement is natural and is, is generated by movement of people and by the temperature. It is very warm in here, especially for this time of year. 
Both players obviously want to put on the best display they can. This is the World Championship semi-final. They've got 2,500 fans here who expect a top quality game. Everybody watching at home the same as well. The players are disappointed that they feel they can't deliver that. They've both agreed that they, that they will continue. The conditions are the same for both players. They've both agreed that they'll continue and play to a winner with this game now. We've done everything we can to ensure that there's no airflow within the building here and we're hoping that the rest of the game can continue without incident. We'll let you, like us, get back to watching a great match. Thanks, Matt. Thanks. We have to feel that that, that is a very sensible way forward. And literally, as we were saying, the heat of this crowd could be the cause of the problem. It, it may be, Dave. Um, I don't think we'll ever find out exactly what it is now. I mean, if every bit of air conditioning is off and all the doors are shut, uh, obviously it's going to get even hotter in there now because if all the doors are shut, there's no airflow, cold air coming into the hall whatsoever. Um, but it, it is a shame it's happened. But what they've got to do now, if they've agreed to get on with it, then you've got to get on with it. You know, you've got to, you've got to do whatever you do to get into the final. Will this game come alight now, do you think? Well, I think for this next set, we could see a little bit of a ropey set uh, before they can get the momentum back, the adrenaline going. Um, but this is, a, this is an absolute crucial set for Aiden. Relief that we're back on. And if he answers here with a one, well, a ton. Well, I have to say that... Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, Adrian Lewis. Yeah, fantastic. absolutely brilliant from Aiden Lewis. And the darts went in perfectly. There weren't no airflow coming across them darts. Let's head back to our commentators. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Rod. Well, one thing to say is that they obliterated the scores from the start of that leg as well. If you remember, they'd had a visit apiece and hadn't thrown well, very much with their first three darts before they went off for that latest wind interruption. So we start from 5-0-1 down in the first leg of the third set. And I do wonder, 59. if James Wade loses this match, will he think, should I have stayed on that stage and got rid of Lewis double quick while his brain was in a jam jar? He had his chance. Could have stayed up there, decided to come off for whatever reason, and may have allowed Lewis to have a lifeline.